Uh, cannabis in high-risk populations, uh, you know, here's an area where we don't have a lot of studies, a lot of data, because we can't study that here. So we can't study, uh, you know, we can't do randomized, well, we can't do trials really at all uh, with, with marijuana in America. Uh, uh, there are only a few places that can do that in government um, sanctioned places. But, you know, we can't just go out there and say, hey, let's take a bunch of elementary school people and, and have them smoke marijuana, right? Uh, so we're not going to see uh, as much data as we want, but we do have some preliminary data that I want to share with you. We're not going to be able to take patients who are pregnant and say, hey, let's smoke marijuana and see what happens, right? We can't do those kind of studies. Um, so we all consider all of these as high-risk populations. Um, Pre-existing or latent psychiatric illnesses, you know, kind of just alluded to that. We're not going to be able to take those high-risk populations and say, hey, let's go smoke marijuana and see what happens. Um, so unfortunately, we, we just don't have that data, and so we have to use caution in those patient populations, again, from a safety standpoint, right? Because what comes first, do no harm. So we have to make sure that we don't do harm on anyone, uh, and that's the most important thing. That's paramount. So heavy use in adolescents, we have seen data that are, that are not trial-related, but this data from observational data. And we've seen that um, heavy, consistent, early use in young children, we've actually seen uh, rates of schizophrenia in that subpopulation go up. Uh, so the thought is that, uh, um, that the cannabis or marijuana played a role in that because there's no other, there was no other variable that could account for that increase in schizophrenia. We saw the same type of thing with bipolar disorder later in life. When adolescents used marijuana, at a, at a, again, at a heavy use uh, at a young age, you saw a higher rate of, of bipolar disorder when they got older. It's all observational data. And um, when you do observational data, you try to weed out for other variables. And if you, if you weed it out for those other variables and you can't come to any other conclusion, you come to that particular conclusion. Uh, so that is something we've seen. And we think that the reason is because the homeostasis has been disrupted. The endocannabinoid homeostasis has been disrupted. And uh, that is the cause for this imbalance that develops at a young age and then becomes hardwired as you get older. So remember, homeostasis is important for all types of facets of life. And when you disrupt that, it, it's not a good thing, okay? So in terms of physical harmfulness, marijuana is much less dangerous than opioids. You're not gonna see um, you know, the respiratory depression and the, and the lack of breathing uh, with marijuana that you will see with an opioid. Uh, definitely amphetamines, barbiturates, those all fall in that same category. Uh, as I said before, much less harmful than cigarettes and um, uh, smoking cigarettes and alcohol. Um, we talked about the fatality and we haven't seen that. Now, if someone wants to take a lethal dose, which we consider to be somewhere between 50 to 70 grams at once uh, of, of marijuana, you know, it's like water. I mean, if you all sat here and took 10 gallons of water in the next 10 minutes, you're not going to be around. You're literally, your brain would explode because it would become swollen and, you know. So if someone really wanted to do harm to themselves, they can, and, and it's just unfortunate. Um, uh, but, you know, if things are taken as prescribed, if you take water as prescribed, you know, you're probably not going to die, right? Same thing with medical cannabis. If it's done as prescribed, we, ha we simply haven't seen the uh, deaths. Um, the dangers of marijuana smoke, okay? So why is smoking different than all the other forms of, of marijuana or even, you know, say medical cannabis even, right, or anything? Well, smoking inherently, you're burning something. Anytime you burn something, you get carcinogens. Any type of paper even, if you burn that, there are carcinogens that are produced. So, um, so you have twofold issues here. Anytime you burn something, carcinogens are produced. In addition to that, marijuana itself, remember we talked about it has about 400 or more different compounds, and a lot of those compounds are not necessarily you know, healthy compounds or good compounds, uh, just like you would find in, in, in tobacco, for example. Um, so, so we see the same thing. Smoking inherently hurts the lungs. Smoking inherently can cause pulmonary function decrease, COPD. Um, it can cause uh, potentially fibrotic changes in the lung, uh, reducing air exchange, reducing the amount of, of function that the alveoli, alveoli have. So we don't recommend smoking at all in, in really anybody. There's really nothing healthy about the, the, the process of smoking and burning anything and inhaling those contaminants. Um, in addition, just marijuana itself, remember, we don't know when someone buys marijuana, we don't know where it came from. This is an ongoing issue. We see the same problem with generic medications, which uh, some of you uh, know I've talked about for years. Um, just a couple days ago, um, you know, the guy in Minneapolis, uh, the head attorney said, oh, it looks like after two years, after all our research, hey, I guess Prince did in fact die of a counterfeit medication that he had no clue about. 
right? So he had a, a pill that said Watson 385, which is the exact pill that it should be for Norco. It contained absolutely no hydrocodone, no Tylenol. It contained lidocaine, U47700, and fentanyl. That's how he died. So he, he literally did not know. And this is where a lot of misinformation occurred for the last two years. They called him a drug addict and blah, 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 and all this crap. It was all untrue. He was taking Norco because he had, we, we all know he had degenerative hip problems because he was wearing high heels for 30 years when he performed. No, really, I mean, that's, that's you know. Um, so he had really bad hips. He was a Jehovah's Witness, so he didn't want blood transfusion, so they actually prevented surgery. So literally his only, you know, sort of solace and the only way he could perform is, you know, taking a Norco or whatever. Uh, beforehand. So he had no idea that it wasn't Norco. And, and I had talked about this way back in 2016 when he died. And two years later, the authorities start talking about that. What does that tell us? It tells us the authorities have absolutely no clue about what the opioid epidemic really is. And they don't have any clue about counterfeit medications. We see counterfeit marijuana still to this day. Uh, we've had hundreds and hundreds of deaths in Chicago area because of tainted marijuana. It's been listed as opioid deaths, but in fact, those patients were taking marijuana. Uh, and so this is another reason why smoking, you don't know what you're getting, and so you'd be very careful, very different than medical cannabis. Uh, with that, I'm done. Um, and for no other reason, Gracie gave me a, the eye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.